But these schemes are very small and their economic impact is, is, you know, is negligible at the moment. So I'm working on how we can really scale this up. Uh, and I think the internet and mobile phones are the key to doing that. I really do. Um, but I also think we should think a little bit about what business is doing here. Because business, uh, um, small and big businesses, for some time have worked out that this, this monetary system we have is, is completely uh, nuts and is not really doing them any favours. And they've been bartering with each other, basically. Um, bilateral counter trade, um, essentially where a business has underutilised resources or, or assets and it simply trades them with another company. And in fact, governments do that as well. The Chinese government does billions of dollars worth of trade in this way um, because they still control most of the, the big industries uh, in China. Um, it's actually estimated to account for you know, 1 in 10, or 10% 10 of world trade in 1995. Uh, totally independent of the, the banking system that we have. Uh, in the United States, the commercial barter industry enabled trades worth more than 10 billion, uh, it was 400,000 business, used this, um, these systems called trade credits. You basically, what you do is you monetize those underutilized assets or resources, you call them a trade credit, and the trade credits circ circulate around. It's interest-free, you can get interest-free lines of credit. Um, you've just got to ensure that there's a, there's a balance between organizations. I think we've got a lot to learn from what the, uh, the, the business sector is, is doing there. Uh, one of the most successful complementary currencies in the world is the Swiss Veer, which currently has 77,000 small firms as, as members um, and household members. That was started in the Great Depression. A lot of innovation in the, in the Great Depression started in 1934 by a, a bunch of entrepreneurs, basically, who realized that there was a sort of serious shortage of money going on and created uh, trade credits that could be um, created essentially, like, just like banks do, out of nothing, but issued to members who could, who could then trade those only with each other. So it's, it's a closed circle between small businesses within Switzerland. It's called a mutual credit circle. And I think this is, this is, these kind of models are the future, really. Peer-to-peer -peer finance, some of you here, I'm sure, have been, have been looking at um, open source innovation uh, and online mobile phone payment systems. In Kenya, I'll just take questions afterwards if that's all, all right, Mary. Yeah, spelling, spelling mistake there. Well, I spotted. Um, <laughs> spell it, spelling, um, yeah, sorry, forge. Yeah, community forge. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> um, essentially, what we're talking about here is just cutting through the existing banking system is having online trading platforms um, that, that go straight through. And this, these are some of the, the examples that we have at the moment. This is a sector that's moving really, really fast. And the internet makes the whole thing much more viable. I'd recommend having a look at the Social Trade Organization, which is a Dutch NGO that has done some really interesting work in South America. They're actually working with the Uruguayan government on a scheme that would enab enable small businesses <clears throat> to trade with each other, uh, to monetize invoices that they've created but can't get paid because they have to wait for so long for big companies or the government to actually give them the cash and monetize the invoice and that can be traded amongst all the small businesses in the network and the Uruguayan government, it looks like, is going to accept that currency, those credits, as business tax, um, which is which would be an enormous groundbreaking innovation that would totally cut through the system that we we have today. Um, Kenya is another great example. Yeah, the MPSA, sorry, yeah, MPSA system in Kenya um, basically revolutionized the, the farming sector in Kenya. Uh, MPSA is a mobile phone based um, online payment system where people simply text through um, their, a unique code with an amount of money to be transferred to somebody else somewhere in the country. Stop farmers having to travel right across Kenya with huge you know, wads of cash in their pockets because they don't have bank accounts and they, they can't do electronic banking. It totally revolutionized the sector. Vodafone's making a hell of a lot of money out of it um, because every time somebody sends one of these texts, they get a, a 
cut, but we can create a not-for-profit system to do that. And that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment with the transition network and those four currencies we, we talked about earlier. We're developing an online trading platform <coughs> to do to enable um, these kinds of payments to happen and to cut through this, this banking system that is, is holding us back. And I just want to finish, really, um, going back to our little, um, little boy down here, hoping for a, a better future. Let's, let's really try and learn from history here, because one thing we know is that economists don't learn from their mistakes, so there's a real onus on us to learn from our mistakes. And this is one of my favourite quotes from Thomas Jefferson, made in 1802, 210 years ago. The American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation. The banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. Thank you.